So hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. <laughs> so I will just introduce quickly uh, Jean and myself. So you have Jean on the phone. He's based in Paris. And myself, uh, Harold, uh, I'm based in Singapore. So we are both French. And the reason, uh, I mean, what we want to talk about today is uh, our common experience. So Jean and myself, we both decided a few years ago to uh, take a year off and to do some voluntary work during one year. We went with the MEP, maybe you are famous with, uh, familiar with the MEP, so it's the Mission Étrangère de Paris. You have a few priests in Singapore which are French. Basically, it's some French priests who come in Singapore and other countries in Asia to, to help uh, develop the community and all. And besides sending priests, they are also sending volunteers in different places. And so Jean and myself, we have been uh, sent to uh, Indonesia, actually. Near, nearby, actually, it was in Bintan. Maybe you're familiar with part of Bintan and the resort. So in the south, you also have uh, Tanjung Pinang, which is the main city in Bintan. And technically, Jean and myself, we were taking care of a uh, household for underprivileged children there. So I don't say too much, because there is a, a video of introduction, a little bit uh, to show you a bit more of what happened. And, so Jean and myself, we, we, we did that voluntary time a different period of time. So mine was in 2015, and Jean is like 2017 or something like that, no? Or 2018? Uh, 2018. Yeah, 2018. So, yeah, lucky him. <laughs> so we will show the, first, the, the video quickly. It's showing Jean in the context of this household and, and what happened and the different activities there. Uh, and, and after that, we will talk a bit about it. And I will also share a little bit. But basically, it was the same place with different children. But we, we both had like different uh, opinion and, and feedback about it. Yeah. And you can see at the previous picture that uh, Jean decided to change his hair wh when he was in Mali uh, Indonesia. Sorry, so that's why he's a bit blonde. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. So ashrama means household in Bahasa Indonesia, more or less. Uh, so. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so, just some context. Um, so, the household was about. Oh. Salut, je m'appelle Charles, j'ai 28 ans. J'ai travaillé à New York dans la finance pendant 4 ans. Le matin, je me levais, je prenais mon Starbucks sur le chemin du taf. Je bossais 14 heures par jour à remplir des fichiers Excel pour optimiser les investissements de mes clients qui possèdent déjà la moitié des richesses du monde. Puis, j'allais rejoindre mes potes sur un rooftop. C'était cool. J'ai voyagé à San Francisco, à Los Angeles. Bref, je me sentais au centre du monde. Un jour, alors que j'enchaînais les rendez-vous, je me retrouve en face d'une église et je m'y arrête. J'avais clairement mis la dimension spirituelle de ma vie en off depuis mes études. J'ai 28 ans et je sais même pas ce que je veux accomplir. Comment concilier mes aspirations pro, personnelles et spirituelles Du coup, en trois semaines, j'ai démissionné et je suis rentré à Paris. Il fallait que je me reprenne, que j'arrête surtout de fuir les questions qui se bousculaient en moi. Un pote me parle alors des missions étrangères de Paris. Ils envoient des volontaires en mission, en Asie ou à Madagascar. La vérité, c'est que je n'ai jamais voyagé autre part qu'en Occident. Mais je veux partir à l'aventure, sortir de ma zone de confort pour donner du sens et me confronter à moi-même, aux autres. Adieu. Comment je me suis retrouvé des gratte ciel de Manhattan à un bidonville en Asie Moi non plus, j'en sais rien. Voici mon histoire. Je 
j'enchaîne taxi, avion, ferry pour partir à la rencontre de Pierre et Jean. Ces deux volontaires sont avec un petit groupe de cathos au milieu du plus grand pays musulman du monde. Ah, se régaler en Indonésie. Ah bah d'ailleurs, faut y aller. Pour y vivre seul pendant une année, j'imagine qu'ils doivent avoir une foi bien accrochée. Leur témoignage risque d'être aussi intense que ce transport pour les rejoindre. Je suis un peu inquiet parce que j'ai le mal de mer. J'espère que ça va pas être trop agité. Allô Salut, en santé Salut, Charles. C'est la mode Malam. C'est la mode Malam. C'est la Bonjour. C'est mon voyage. Il y avait votre vague là sur... Non, au début, au début ça va et après tout le monde s'est endormi. Ah ouais Ah ouais, dormi, j'ai dormi pendant deux heures. Bon, on y va Ouais, c'est parti. Dans cette école chrétienne, tous les matins, dès les premières lueurs, leur mission commence par réveiller les internes à la douceur du style local. Les gars, hop, lumière qui passe. Désolé. Ayo, tu viens de paguer, c'est moi. Ayo, Kelvin. C'est du clagé. Mais il n'y a pas. Ça, c'est mieux qu'un jacuzzi à sauna réuni. Ça, c'est l'authenticité de la mission. C'est comment tu te sens au contact des jeunes. C'est quand tu utilises les mêmes outils. J'ai un ami qui disait la mission, un peu, c'est savoir se mouiller. Pour Jean, cette prise de risque s'est traduite par la décision de vivre l'expérience de la mission au milieu de ses études. J'étais en, en cours d'anglais euh, dans mon école, je suis en école d'ingénieur, et euh, j'étais en plein cours d'anglais, j'ai reçu l'appel voilà, des MEP, et euh, donc euh, il m'annonce que je pars en Indonésie. Ici, on s'occupe d'un foyer de jeunes garçons de, de 14 à, à 17 ans. Euh, voilà, donc c'est des adolescents, c'est une période pas super facile pour eux, c'est comme en France. Hein. Et donc les parents euh, qui craignent que leurs enfants euh, traînent un peu euh, voilà, dans, dans ce milieu un peu euh, ouais, dangereux pour eux, ils nous les envoient ici, où ils recevront euh, une meilleure éducation. On les réveille, on va vivre les temps au foyer euh, avec eux, parce qu'ils ont cours que le matin. L'après-midi, il faut qu'on les occupe, il y a des activités euh, avec nous. On doit rigoler avec eux, mais aussi parfois il faut des temps où il faut être sérieux. Euh, donc il faut, faut aussi s'imposer cette limite. Et, euh, et, et Ouais, finalement, on a vraiment un rôle de, de grand frère. Je crois qu'on est vraiment la, la seule école catholique de l'île, déjà. On est vraiment un petit, une petite oasis catholique dans ce monde musulman. Donc là, là ça fait six mois que je, je suis dans, dans la mission, donc pile la moitié. Ça se passe bien, je commence à avoir une relation privilégiée avec certains, de, certains enfants. Il y en a d'autres où c'est encore compliqué. Il y avait un soir où euh, voilà, c'était un, un jeune qui s'appelait euh, Thomas. Puis il y avait tous les enfants qui ont commencé à chambrer. Mais à un moment, il a, il a craqué, il a complètement fondu en larmes. Et on a essayé de discuter, on est, on est sorti, on allait, on allait marcher. J'essayais d'écouter, et puis la plupart du temps, je ne comprenais rien à ce qu'il me disait. Hein. Mais je disais oui, oui, et puis je souriais, et puis j'essayais d'être là quoi, pour, pour lui. Et je crois que ça lui a fait du bien. Bah, non, on, on, on s'entend bien. On a plein de moments de joie, on a plein de moments où on rigole et tout ça, mais des moments profonds, c'est euh, peut-être plus dans la, dans la tristesse où on les, on les retrouve finalement, dans la, dans la, dans la peine. Ces moments-là sont, sont importants. Quoi. Être volontaire, c'est très, euh, très intense. Euh, voilà, on passe par plein de, de très beaux moments, euh, des moments aussi euh, plus durs. Voilà, moi, j'ai eu un gros coup de mou au bout d'un mois de, de mission. Et après, après c'est super bien passé. Euh, j'ai commencé à prendre mes marques sur la mission aussi. Je pense qu'il y avait de ça. Je vais trouver mon rôle ici à, à jouer. Des petits moments qui font que, que ta journée, bah, bah, elle est belle. C'est une période de vacances scolaires. La plupart des élèves sont rentrés chez eux, mais un petit groupe reste ici. Éparpillés sur les centaines d'îles environnantes, ils habitent trop loin pour se permettre l'aller-retour. Pierre et Jean en profitent justement pour les aider à préparer la prochaine rentrée. En petit comité, c'est aussi un moyen parfait pour gagner en intimité avec chacun d'entre eux. Je profite de l'occasion pour m'immiscer dans la classe. Ah, ah. Là, euh, Beban, Beban. 
Ya beban. Beban PQ F. Sikap secara. Secara matematika. Satu, satu, dua, tiga, tiga, empat, empat, delapan, delapan. Nah. Delapan. Nah. Dis. 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 Bonjour, tu peux dire Salam Pagi Salam, 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 Punya manyet yang bisa menggeyak mata untuk selalu mata tengkirnya. <laughs> 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 Je m'appelle Florentino, mais on m'appelle Tino. J'ai un grand frère et une petite sœur. Mes parents sont divorcés. Ma mère est musulmane et mon père est catholique, lui. Je suis venu dans cette école car mon frère y est déjà. Les gens jouent au foot et puis ça avait l'air sympa. Et un jour, on m'a demandé pourquoi je voulais être prêtre. J'ai dit que c'est le Seigneur qui m'a appelé. Ça fait 4 ans que je suis au foyer et 8 ans que je n'ai pas vu ma mère. J'aimerais bien la revoir un jour et lui annoncer que je suis devenu prêtre. Ce petit séjour euh, indonésien. Très cool. J'ai pas mangé de chien, non, mais c'est pas plus mal que ça. C'est pas plus mal que ça, ouais, je pense. Mais euh, non, c'est incroyable ce que vous vivez avec les, avec les enfants en termes de en termes d'expérience. En plus sur une qui est cool. Là, ouais, tu m'as pris ouais, en scooter, on s'est baladé. Euh, L'ambiance est plutôt sympa. Ouais, faire, quoi. Ce qui est bien avec euh, partir un an, c'est vraiment de de voir un peu le, de, enfin, le les fruits de, de ce que tu fais. Et elle est où là, quand ta mission du coup toi la joie de la mission, mais la joie de la mission, elle est, elle est quand, quand je joue au foot avec eux, quand, quand je chante avec eux, quand... c'est des petites joies la joie de la mission, c'est une joie qui, qui va chercher. C'est les joies de la mission. C'est les joies de la mission, c'est ça, ouais. Et je pense que le but de la mission aussi, c'est d'apporter cette joie, la joie de la mission, Merci. tout au long de ma vie, tu vois. Tu penses que tu verras un de tes jeunes un jour en France J'aimerais bien, j'aimerais bien l'accueillir, que ce soit ah, comme eux m'ont accueilli, tu vois. Allez, à la vôtre. Okay. Des câbles bœuf, hein? Ah ouais, ouais, ouais. Surtout que c'est pas du bœuf, quoi. C'est quoi? Oh, c'est du chien. Ah non, c'est vraiment du chien. C'est du chien! <rire> c'est vraiment du chien. Ah non, c'est vraiment, vraiment du chien, ouais. Un chien qui me fait piéger sur tous les plats. Un bon labrador. C'est assez chargé le programme ici, si je comprends bien. Est-ce que vous êtes déjà aéré la tête Est-ce que vous êtes sorti déjà un peu de l'île Ouais, on, on, peut prendre, euh, on peut prendre du temps pour nous. Euh, là, on a fait deux grosses sorties. Euh, pour Noël, on est allé euh, chez les enfants, sur une des îles paumées. C'était très 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 sympa. Ouais. On était vraiment coupé, la, coupé du monde. Déjà là, sur la mission, on est assez coupé du monde. C'est ce que j'allais dire, tu es allé couper du monde encore plus que tu es coupé du monde aujourd'hui Ah oui, carrément. On est, on est parti, ouais... Euh... 20 heures, 20 heures de, de bateau Non, ouais, c'était loin, c'était au nord, c'était sur les, les îles Rio. Okay. Et, euh, et là-bas, on a pu découvrir les familles, on, voilà, ils nous ont accueillis comme, comme des rois. On a été chez, chez quelqu'un qui avait rien, ils nous ont tout donné. Quoi. Plus après, on a passé 24 heures euh, sur une petite maison en pilotis de chez Simon. Ah ouais Et euh, on a rencontré son père, et là, euh, bah, 24 heures, euh, bah, t'es sur le pilotis, tu peux rien faire, quoi, à part te baigner. Ouais. Et après, on est allé euh, pour fêter le nouvel an, on ouais. a trouvé euh, deux volontaires avec qui on avait fait une session de formation. Petite photo de groupe euh, en Birmanie. 
Ouais, très beau gosse. Euh, voilà, derrière, devant la, la pagode. Donc là, on peut voir, y a, ouais, ça vient de, de partout. Il y a Indonésie, donc euh, nous deux, avec, euh, avec Marie, qui est euh, la volontaire qui est sur euh, l'île d'en face. Nous, on, on disait que c'est l'île d'en face, mais en fait, c'est un peu plus loin. D'accord, c'est genre euh, 32 jours de, de voyage. C'est environ ouais. ça. Ouais. Et euh, qui est à Bata, mais qui euh, aussi s'occupe d'un foyer. Euh, okay. Mais c'est la tranche d'argent en dessous. En fait, nous, on a des enfants qui viennent de son foyer. Ah, d'accord. Donc, il euh, y a une sorte de continuité. Hélène, qui est euh, en Malaisie, à une heure de Kuala. Euh, donc Thibaut qui est en Birmanie, il est, euh, il est professeur, professeur d'anglais. On a le Cambodge avec Mathilde et Anne-Elisabeth. Anne -Elisabeth, Anne -Elisabeth. C'est vrai que quand, quand, quand on s'inscrit pour l'Ontario, on... il y a aussi le, tout le côté humanitaire bien sûr, mais on se dit euh, ouais, euh, bah, j'ai envie de partir loin. Euh... Forcément on pense à aventure. Ouais. Si tu cherches l'aventure, tu vas la trouver. C'est des pays là on l'a trouvé. Ah, oui. C'est l'aventure. Pierre et Jean sont pour moi des exemples de volontaires qui vivent la mission comme un défi. Un moyen de se laisser challenger en étant au service des autres. Ils savent profiter des côtés fun et vivent la mission comme une exploration culturelle, une aventure physique et humaine. Leur proximité avec les jeunes m'inspire car elle est la preuve qu'il n'y a pas de frontières entre les cœurs et que seul au bout du monde, dans la discrétion d'un petit internat chrétien, deux simples bougies au milieu de centaines de minarets, deux jeunes volontaires peuvent faire toute la différence dans la vie des autres. So, yeah, so here's the video. So it, it was a bit long, but it gives you the idea where we were and what was happening and how it was for Jean uh, to, to be living there. Just a few more specificities. So in this household, usually we had like 35 to 50 children. Um, Uh, as John mentioned before, it was be between 11 to 17 years old. Uh, only boys, because there were another one for girls a little bit further away. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, so we didn't just go there and speak French or English with the children. Obviously, they, they are not speaking Baha uh, English so well, actually. So both John and myself, we, we learned Bahasa Indonesia before, like for two weeks before we went actually in the household to start to help. So that also helped us to, to get closer to to the children. Uh, yeah, so that's the, the context. <laughs> um, so we'll go there a little bit later. Jean, do you want to share a bit more about your experience first? Uh, yes, yes, well, uh, there is an echo, so uh, I can see you well, but uh, it's okay. So nice to meet you, everyone. Yes, I'm John. Uh, I was saying the commentary with the blonde hair. Oh, I have uh, blonde hair. I think it's better with this. Um, so yes, uh, I want to share with you my my my, my, my great experience there in the uh, Asrama, some of the messages. Uh, I was there um, between uh, I think 2018 and 2019 years. Yes. Um, oh, I think I can hear you. Oh, okay. Um, And uh, yes, uh, in France, I was in my uh, engineering school, so I took a gap here to, um, yes, to, to give my time for, um, for, for this kind of uh, mission uh, with the, the MEP, the MEP. Um, and uh, yes, just to, to share you a great, uh, great experience. Um, it was not very easy for me uh, to, to be there uh, one year, one more whole year, uh, but it was very, uh, very beautiful for me. Um, it was not very uh, easy because uh, we, we lived there uh, 24 hours uh, per day with, with the boys. Uh, so we, we play with them, we, we are like, um, like their friends, but also we, we have authority uh, with them, so it's sometimes very difficult to um, have the border uh, between uh, Being the friends um, and the, uh, the brother for, for them and the, the authority. Um, so, yes, it was not just, it, it wasn't so easy uh, for me. Um, I, I remember one of those times uh, when it was uh, uh, quite difficult. Um, I had to connect the boys uh, for, for a fun story. Um, Um, and they were all uh, against me, so I was angry and um, didn't understand what I was doing here. Um, far away from my, my home, and uh, giving my time for, for kids uh, kid like 
we didn't want it. So I was in my room, uh, beside a, a brick, and uh, I was having this. Uh, the, the boy came to pick me up to, to play soccer um, with him. Um, it, it was a very uh, a good afternoon. Um, uh, all, all the boys uh, uh, we came and uh, we, we just played uh, soccer. Um, we, we all forget about the, uh, uh, the morning and uh, uh, on the bad uh, atmosphere. Um, and now, with, uh, I, I think I can organize the, the work of, of the Lord's uh, uh, this experience on, uh, in my life um, and uh, how he, he helped me uh, in the church. Um, yes, and, and I think that the Lord was a very good, um, a good time to. Um, for example, uh, I think I, I I speak about this in the video, but uh, with uh, with Jim, my uh, co-founder, uh, we went to uh, the Mancate Island. I don't know if uh, you, you know you know it's in the Almas uh, uh, Archipelago. I don't know the name. Well, to spend Christmas with with both of um, and there the, the rules uh, changed. The, the boys uh, became the, the guides, and um, we were the, the, the students. Um, and it was very uh, crazy experience. Uh, I could learn more about the, the child and uh, uh, the kids and the families. Um, and I, I think that it was maybe uh, the, uh, the most crazy time of, of my life because uh, I was very far away from. All I, I know um, when giving, giving my, my life to, to, the, uh, to the hands of, of the boys. Um, um, but, but I think that the Lord was with me to um, help me to, um, to enjoy, enjoy this moment and uh, yeah, I'll take the, just the good parts of, of the experience. Although, um, yes, I think um, three years after that experience, um, even if that was, that was tough, sometimes I, I just uh, can't remember the, uh, the bad times, I just remember the, the positive. Um, uh, maybe I, I think it's uh, um, it Jesus that, uh, uh, that, that do that. And, uh, uh, I, I think it's a lot of fun. Thanks, Joe. Um, and maybe I can also. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Jean. And and maybe I can uh, I can share a little bit as as well. So, uh, as Jean sa said, there are a lot of joyful moments and challenges, right? When we talk about volunteering, most of the time people talk about the positive and the joy, right? And it was sometimes. You know, in life, sometimes you just have like normal, joyful moments. You have very intense one, and you have very difficult one. And it happened in everyone's life, right? And it's the same in volunteering. And uh, when, when I think about one very high, joyful moment when I was there, uh, I, I think about, uh, so the place, when, when we go there, it's, it's very, we struggle a lot at the very, very beginning when we arrive. It's not because of the people we meet. It's not because like everything which is happening. It's just that compared to where we come in France and we land into that household, it's, there is a lot of restriction, right? So when I arrived, the water was not even drinkable. And there were like contamination with like the toilet and stuff like that. So the children were sick. And then there, is, like, there were like a lot of different items which were like, not very sanitary, uh, healthy, and all of that in the household. So, so when we arrived from France, the first struggle that I, actually I had, but uh, maybe Jean was the same, but usually it's getting use of this new life and how to, to live day by day, by day like this. Um, and then we try with the time <laughs> and, and the, the strength that God gives us, we, we try to overcome one by one each of the challenges we met. So first the challenge was like, how am I going to live one year without hot water? You saw in the video, it seems stupid, right? It's just showering with cold water. But when you wake up every day at 6 a.m., you, you need to be in a good mood to start your day by like, just showering with like, super cold water. So, so you have a lot of like, 
challenges that come one by one and, and that you need to overcome. Another one was learning Bahasa to be able to communicate in, with the children. And what John mentioned in, in the video is true. I mean, sometimes we were talking with them and we had no idea what they were saying, right? We, but we just wanted to be here. So we didn't want to ask them to repeat 10 times. And there were, there were even a moment where one of them was talking to me, but <laughs> I, I didn't understand. So I just say, oh, OK, OK, uh, that's good, or something easy like that. Like, I think it happened to everyone, right? But actually, the children just told me that his best friend just died, and I was just saying, oh, OK, OK, good. <laughs> so you know, sometimes it's very challenging and how to, to fix that situation after and, and, and continue with the next one, because we have a lot of children, and each of them has different personalities and different backgrounds. So some of the children are coming from very remote Iceland, and they are very poor, and, and they don't, don't always have food for every day and all of that. And some of them has more money that are coming usually from Batam, but they are the very bad personalities. That's why they were coming to this household. So you need to switch easily between all of those mentalities. And it's, it's really not easy. And as Jean uh, mentioned, sometimes you will have a bunch of them against you. You're like 10 against one. And, and how uh, am I going to overcome this? So, so we had a lot of different challenges like that that we needed to to move on and to, to get along with it and to find the strength to, to go ahead. And sometimes we may realize that it's, it's uh, the Lord helping us. And sometimes we may miss, about, uh, miss that because we are so busy. It's very intense. You know, you wake up every day at like 5 or 6. You finish at midnight every day. You have like a, a ton of things to do during the day. Most of the time, I, I was just like a robot, just doing what I needed to do. And, and you don't realize things that you want to do. And it's only after a few years that you realize, oh, these challenges actually is a good memory now, but at the moment I remember some of the time I wanted to cry. I was so tired, you know? And, and even the children that you like, sometimes it happened because they are teenagers, they will come against you. And you're like, mm, I thought I had a few friends and actually no, right? And you are so far away from your family and stuff like that, so it's also a bit hard, right, to live abroad. But, but in opposite of that, you had also beautiful moments. Uh, I had a picture, but I forgot to, to put it in the slide. But actually, among some of the activities that we done, we had done different activities with the children. Uh, and, and, and that's some souvenir, like Jean mentioned, like when we play football and stuff like that. I'm not a very sportive person, so actually I was not playing so much with the children. But I found a way to have good moments with them. And, and we participate to different activities, and we, which was really brief brightening the day, let's say. Um, and also, we, we try to renovate the place to, to make it a bit more healthy and to be a bit safer for those children, right? To, to train them on the good, good way to, to live and to trash the things in the trash bin and not whatever you want and all of that. And, and actually, some of those activity, one day, so you saw, you saw the ashrama, right? Um, it was just concrete on the floor. And, and for me, it was like, OK, I came. It was already concrete, so what to do? I'm just accepting it and living with it, right? And actually, during one of the uh, holidays, all the bed, all the bed uh, not the mattress, but the structure of the bed was, was metallic and was rusty, right? So we decided to clean it, to paint it. And somehow, it happened that the paint came, okay, <laughs> came on the ground. And, and so it was trace of the con on, on the concrete, so we just hide it with like some carpet or something, like just to hide what I, I did wrong, right? And then when the children came back after the holidays, they come jumping to me saying, oh, you changed something, oh, that's beautiful. And, and for me, it was like just random, right? And they actually started to remove their, their shoes before entering any room and any place. And they started to clean by themselves. And they started to take care of the place and all of that. And they were so happy about it. It was like very touching, you know? And it's very small element and easy element. You don't know why we did it. And actually, we did it by mistake. But then this memory of those, those children coming back to me in that uh, in that spirit, in that uh, approach, is actually very touchy, and, and I keep remembering that. Another moment was we, we did some renovation also uh, in, in the prayer room. And then one of the children, so it was not Tino, it was another one which was in the video. When he saw the renovation, he came back to me and he started to cry, you know. <laughs> and we just painted one of the walls because to make it a bit more like nicer, right? And, and it's very touchy to have them. So they are bringing their 
there are a lot of challenges, but some moments like that are very speechless. Because right? <laughs> we are just doing whatever we are able to do. We just process the day one by one like we can do, and, and we try to find the strength every, anywhere we can find it. And sometimes it's just God, God who helps us to find whatever we need to do. And sometimes I was just thinking, OK, I would like to do that, but I don't have time to take care of it because I already take care of like 45 children, and, and, and it's taking a while, right? And then, in a weird way, Providence came, and I received a phone call from someone, and I just say, oh, I would like to do that, but I have no time to do it. Oh, but I know this person told me she, want, she wanted to help for this kind of activity. So what do you need exactly? I put you in contact, and, and you solve it. And then within a few weeks, we had the fund. We had the, someone to help us to build and to organize everything. And it just happened like this. And I almost, I, it's not that I didn't do any effort, but it's just that everything just uh, matched perfectly to, to make it happen without, I mean, it's actually, I mean, after, on the moment, you don't know, right? You just accept the fact and you try to make it happen. But it's afterward where you realize actually God was here to help us and to, to, to bring those people uh, to us so we can organize and to help the, we can help the children with whatever they need and find ways to, to, to lift, lift up the place, let's say. So there were a lot of, sorry, I'm speaking a lot. <laughs> but, and I think Jean is tired to hear all my stories again because he hears them a lot. But yeah, it was a lot of uh, positive and challenges, let's say, because on the moment it was a very negative experience, but then afterward I'm happy to have been able to overcome it. But it was really trying to find a way to make things happen and to find God in, in, that, uh, in those activities and, and in those days. <laughs> One year can seem a long time, but actually when you start, it seems very long, and when you end, you are like, oh my God, it has been already 12 months. And, 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 and and actually, sometimes you want to stay a bit longer. <laughs> but, but it's, at the end, it's an amazing year. But yeah, it has been like a lot of ups and downs. <laughs> but, but overall, uh, a good experience. Um, and just, uh, just to share a little bit, sorry, we don't have so much time left, but just to share a little bit. So Jean, in the video, he, he shared that in Batam, there is this asrama for younger children, so before 11 which has another volunteer who is taking care of them. I mean, before COVID, now there is no, no, no one, but before COVID, we had that ashrama in, in, in Batam, then we had the ashrama that Jean and myself, we, take care, we took care of in, uh, in Bintan, and, and, and after that, we, with, with Jean, we realized that there were nothing after that to take care of the children, so for university and all of that. So, so it's a bit in that mentality that with uh, Jean, we decided to, and, and that's why we are here today, <laughs> we, we also decided to create a, a charity called Chaya Masadepan, which means light of the future, because we wanted to, to have a follow-up for those children. And so we created that charity in the idea of, uh, of allowing children to go to university or to higher studies. So, so um, yeah, we started to create it in France first, because at that time I was also based in France, and, and Jean as well, so we just created it in France at the beginning. And, and earlier this year, uh, we also decided to create uh, one branch in Singapore with uh, Carita, uh, Cari, sorry, Caritas Humanitarian Head and Relief Initiative Singapore. <laughs> so, so Linus is here and Ryan and the team as well. So we, we created Chaya Masadevan also in Singapore to, to try to share about it. And, and that's why we have been uh, invited to this event to share with you. <laughs> but, but yeah, so it's just a follow up for us on on the activities, uh, trying to help them to the next level. So we started small with uh, small children. But, but now we started small with small children, but now we are more like uh, 11 children and growing slowly. And, and last year, I mean, you all know that COVID has been a very big challenge, and, and Carith has been very supportive in that because we started some activities to distribute food ration in Indonesia and to bit like sanitizer and, and mask and all of that. So starting since last year, more or less, we started to uh, have a health part of our activities as well, a health uh, topic. So we started on, 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 on education. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so yes, we started on education. And you can see uh, Enricus was the first one to graduate last year. He's a nurse now. 
and, and we have a bunch of uh, a few, we have three or four graduate now. Then we started with healthcare and donation last year due to, co due to COVID, yeah. Uh, but we are happy to grow and to find new ways to help them. Uh, but, but yeah, so that was just in the continuity of what Jean and myself participated in last year. Uh, not last year, but last time in Indonesia. And, and we just uh, created that charity recently to, to help. So, um, yeah, so I'm sorry, I wanted to have a few minutes for questions. I don't know if we still have a little time. But, oh, we have one minute, so if you have a question, you can shoot very quickly. But, <laughs> but, Yes. Um, but it's run by MEP or what? So originally it was created by a MEP priest 20 years ago, 30 years ago, or something like that. I forgot. But now it's managed by the local par par parish. So it's just that it was a MEP priest who created it. That's why there is a connection with MEP. And every year before COVID, we were sending two volunteers to help. So that's why you had Peter and, and John in the video. And, uh, myself and Louis previously, but it's there is this MEP connection, but now it's managed purely uh, locally. There is still a local person running the place. Do you guys let it help, or you guys basically are the only one running? The so there is a director of the place, which is an Indonesian uh, person, Panando. Then there is one cook to help with, uh, because uh, yeah, we need to give food three times a day to the children. And, and then we we were two volunteers. And act, I mean, to, to go run through the day very quickly, so we wake up, we wake the children up, we go to the mass or to the pray, we had very quick breakfast, then they go to school until 1 p.m. more or less, then we have the lunch in the asrama, then there is a small uh, nap time <laughs> for everyone. Uh, when the children are at school, actually, uh, the volunteers, we went to the market to purchase the food for everyone for the day. And we do any kind of shopping that we need to do to fix the house. Because, you know, when, we have, when you have an apartment in Singapore, you have a few renovations to do. But when it's like a, a big ha household for like 50 children, then you have much more things to fix every day, right? So, so we had those kind of activities as well. Um, and then in the afternoon, we will have like cleaning time of the place, and we will have some games with the children, so football and soccer and all. And then you have the study time, so you need to try to remember whatever you learned during junior and senior high school to help the children. <laughs> and it was very difficult for me, but maybe Jean was better. Uh, and then you have the dinner and then uh, the, last, the evening pray before you try to bring them to sleep. So, I mean, uh, you know teenagers, right? We tell them you need to go to sleep at 10, uh, 10 p.m. and then at 12 they are still doing... Uh, I mean, I did the same when I was younger, so... <laughs> but when it's 45 children, then it's a bit more challenging. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, that, that was more or less our day. Uh, and, and they were also here during the weekend, so we take them... Like, during the weekend we had more like, fun time as well. Uh, but every day was more or less uh, like this. Um, yeah, I hope I, re I answer your question because I already uh, forgot your first question. <laughs> Sorry. When we move from here, when we leave this place, where can we find more information? Uh, so we have a website and we have a Facebook account and Instagram. So uh, we can give you. Uh, yes. Oh, here. Yeah. So you have chayamasadepan.org, and, and then if you have Facebook or Instagram, you can also connect. Otherwise. If you go to the Caris website, you, you will also find us there. And sorry, I think behind you had a question as well. Oh, yeah. how, how is the uh, local funding and the French funding? Oh, okay. So um, for the Asrama itself, uh, we so each children had some, to pay some fees depending on what they were. pay for the sleeping and all the food and all that, right, all together. But then we customize depending on each children. Uh, and those that cannot pay, or that can only partially pay maybe 20 a year a month, which is FIT, we will find some donators in France or in Singapore to help them to compensate the value that we pay. They were not ready. Sorry? So the capacity is 60, uh, but most of the time, it's like that it's between 75 to 50, I think. Okay. 
I mean, mine was between 40 and 45, and I think Jean, it was between 35 to 40, right? Uh, yes. Yes, depends on the year of the study. So currently, they reopen recently, uh, but it's only like 10 to 13 children. Because of COVID, a lot of children don't want to go back, and actually a lot of children uh, drop school to help the family and all. So, so we cannot really look at it now, but theoretically, we can afford those children. And usually, out of the 40, 45, for us, I think we had like half of it which had partnership, like uh, sponsorship or stuff like that, like between 20 to 25. To give you an idea. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I need to stop, but if you have more questions, you can tell me partially as well. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs>